we remember 35% of what we smell, 5% of what we see, 2% of what we hear. And people underestimate the power of this sense. Our guest today is Johanna Monange, the founder and CEO of Maison 21 Gram. Let's everybody design their sense of their soul, a scent fitting exactly who you are, how you look, and what you want to achieve in life. So my first question is, is entrepreneurship really for everyone? Interesting question. Entrepreneurship is not for everybody. And I think we are selling this dream of freedom and multi-billion company. Within two years, it's, it's completely wrong. A startup needs to be very careful. You always fragile whatever the size you are. The more you grow, the more you need to be careful. What's something that you believe in that most people would not agree with? I think a lot of people don't believe me when I say you need to work like a dog if you want to succeed. How do you avoid bringing home or into your personal relationships, all your business-related anxieties. You don't avoid, you bring it home and you hope your home is gonna help you. <laughs> Nobody can make your dream happen except you and believe into it because you will attract the right vibes. The learning is also the little steps. You need the big vision, but every little step is very important. We are fragile human beings and be conscious about that. It helps you to go through the tough things. Joanna, why don't we start with some context about your background. What are the key turning points in your life that define who you are today? Huh, interesting question. I think my first turning point was when I finished to study and I, I decided to leave for China. So it was a while ago and I think uh, Europe was a bit boring for me. So I had the opportunity to go and, and study Chinese economy there and I, I loved it. It was a, an amazing journey. I completely discuss, di disconnect from my culture, from my language, from my family. And it was strike for life uh, because China was, a, it was like 96. It was a tough country. Uh, so I, I was 19 and I just learned by my, myself how to survive, uh, how to make a living, how to learn, how to develop. And then uh, this opportunity allowed me to enter into perfumery because I, I never thought I'm going to be uh, uh, someone working and designing perfume. So when I came back, I find a a job in a, in a company in Graz, and they proposed me to do the perfumery school, which very little people have access to, in order to send me back to China to develop the market. So that was my first turning point. And the second then, I have a fantastic career, and the second one was to give up my, my career in, a, in big group with big brand, famous designer, to decide to be a, an entrepreneur. It was a very, very difficult choice. I think the first one, it was easy because you you go to a new country, new discovery, but when you have to leave what you have mm. built and what you know and where you are in, in your comfort zone, uh, it's, it's the most difficult choice of my life. It, it took me almost three years. Okay. And then you have circumstances that help you to, to leave, but that was uh, my second step, uh, very important in my life. How, how do you end up, you said 19 years old, how do you end up in China? Because I was doing a, a, a business school, Subdeco, in France, and they proposed you to do exchange with US, UK, Germany, and it was so boring for me. I, and then it was the first time an exchange opened with Beijing at this time. And I said, okay, I jump on it. And, uh, but I, I really didn't expect it's going to be so hard because it, it was middle age at this time, China, to be honest. Uh, so it was just the, the seek for adventure, new things. Uh, and everybody talked about China at this time. So... It was a pioneer. You speak Chinese? Yes. Okay, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, so you started your entrepreneurship journey a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And so we have, I mean, first, first theme today is entrepreneurship. So we have a tech, tech wave that brought a few hugely successful companies to life. Uh, and it all happened fairly quickly in the last 20 years. So first Google, then we had uh, Facebook, then we had Airbnb, then we had Instagram that sold, I think, for $1 billion to Facebook within maybe two years or 18 months. And at the, same, at the same time, we had business schools that were capitalizing on all these entrepreneurship trends to sell entrepreneurship courses and masters to attract students. So the message was pretty clear. Everybody can become an entrepreneur. So this made young graduates leave schools thinking they'd be, they, they'd be able to build multi-billion uh, companies in a few years. So my first question is, is it the case? Is entrepreneurship really for everyone? Not at all. And I think, uh, honestly, the school that teach entrepreneurship, uh, this is not the right path for me. Uh, 
entrepreneurship is, is life, is field, is uh, it's building, is executing your ID. Uh, so entrepreneurship is not for everybody. And I think we are a bit selling this dream of freedom and multi-billion company, like within two years, it's, it's completely wrong. I have, I have been discussing with a lot of entrepreneurs like us and everybody has been through not hell, but uh, a lot of stress. Uh, you need a, a, a lot of knowledge in different backgrounds, finance, uh, sailing, uh, HR, uh, legal. Uh, you, you cannot imagine all the topics you need to cover and you don't have the money to afford the experts you have in a, in a big corporation or, or at school because you talk with professional people who are specialists in every field. But when you come with your own company and you really start from scratch, you have to build everything from scratch. So you need a tons of resilience. You need to be very adaptable. You need to pivot very fast and you need to be like a work alcoholic. There is no way you can succeed without working like a dog. And I would say what can save you is having a very harmonized environment around you because you're going to be shaken so hard. But if you don't have a family or a lover or who can support your, your well-being, it's, it's very difficult. So, so if entrepreneurship is not for everyone, who is it for? Who becomes entrepreneur? Who is more likely to become an entrepreneur? Is it something that, you have, that you're born with? Is it something that you're basically shaping through your life experience? Like, how, what's your theory on that? No, I, I think you, you, you feel, I, I feel it since I, I'm very detailed. My parents were entrepreneurs also. Uh, so I think if you have the right environment and you have seen entrepreneurs around you uh, and you really feel the vibe of it, you want to you wanna become like them, you, you exchange with them. Uh, it, 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 it's something you have to feel in you. And not just, oh, I'm bored from my company, so I'm going to be an entrepreneur. It, it doesn't happen like mm. that. And, and I think what is great and what I love about the U.S., you need to fail before to become a real entrepreneur. So start with small things and don't do it just for a living if you really need money because you're not going to make money very fast. Mm. Uh, it, entrepreneur is building. So when you build a house, you know, it takes time. So, okay, you have the walls, but after you need to put the furniture to decorate. Uh, so so I, I, I think it's, it's really for people who have a high resilience and are very open mind and are eager to learn because you, you, don't, you don't know nothing uh, when you start entrepreneurship, especially if you're young. So my advice would be start a bit in life, in, in other perhaps startup or people who have already built something to see what they are going through. And, uh, and, and if you have been in the corporate, I, I know a lot of people will move like me from corporate, but this is great. But when you are in the corporate, have the objective to become an entrepreneur. So then you that's, can- Yeah, that's what I want to say, basically. Because you're saying, so what's your advice? Is it go work for a company, a consulting company, a startup, whatever, a few years to shape yourself up and mm -hmm. then start a business? Or actually you should start a business as quickly as possible because- the more you work for a big company, the less you're likely to leave your comfort zone and your good salary and your dreams. Wrong, because I did it. So uh, working for another company allow you also to build your capital, your knowledge. And when you know you want to become an entrepreneur, you're going to leave because it's, it's an appeal, you know. So mm. I don't think it's uh, my advice. And it's personal, again, is learn a, a bit before to, to, to launch yourself because you need to acquire basic skills, uh, as I was mentioning, finance, HR, selling, marketing, uh, all company needs this kind, this kind of assets. Um, uh, so master it with other and, uh, and have a vision in mind and what you want to do and you need to be good at something. So me, I, I had my expertise in perfumery. I know it from A to Z, mm. but I didn't know retail. So you're going to have some blind spots you will need to fill very quick. And and if you are able to learn, you will learn. Nothing is impossible. And you can become a master in finance, I, I think, uh, except if you want to become a surgeon. Uh, but I think you can, but have at least like two or three, like really strong uh, strengths. Uh, you, you're going to master and develop and you, you build your enterprise where you are good at. I, mm. I, I met people we completely switch. For, for me, it's, it's a promise to failure. You need to pivot in something that it's, it's in an environment you really know. And you have spotted weakness is what you did from what I understand. You, you work in a company and you say, there's something wrong here. Mm. I'm going to fix it. So you know what are the problems of the industry and you have a solution. And then you put a team around you to build the solution. 
and the, the second challenge is the, the team because alone you, you cannot do that much. Uh, so to fill the, the blind spot you don't have or the knowledge you don't have, you need to bring people in your story. Uh, so also during the time you're working, learning, you can identify your team. Also, you will see people who are very good at. And yeah, if you are a really good entrepreneur, you will convince people to follow you because it, it's a dream of everybody to, to build something and to be free and uh, to do whatever you, you want to build. <laughs> so you're saying, that's interesting. Is the dream of everybody to be free and build something and and build like basically work towards your dream? I don't think and it's we the have... dream of everybody. Some people are very happy to be guided every day to have a Absolutely. routine. Uh, it, it's people like us. We were one percent of the population. I would say a lot of people hate to be in an unknown environment. What is going to happen tomorrow? Uh, so you're saying one percent. So are like, let's say entrepreneurs, but then there is all the, what we call one entrepreneurs. So people who want to be an entrepreneur because mm -hmm. they think it's cool mm -hmm. because they've been sold a dream yeah. mm -hmm. by social media, by uh, 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 the, the media industry, yeah. you know, the newspapers, by these like big success stories, because we only see the big success stories online. We, we don't see that for one success story, there is 10,000 or 20,000 businesses that are either not successful, either failed, either kind of like okay-ish. I mean, the numbers maybe don't match, but... That's pretty much the idea. So like people think that being an entrepreneur is, is glamorous, you know, because the entrepreneurs are kind of seen as these new rock stars. But what's the real cost? What's the real price of entrepreneurship? What do people not I, realize? The last thing I would say is glamorous. It's the, the toughest experience in your life. You, it's, it's a really a fulfilling experience because you're going to learn tons of things. You're going to build things by your own because when you are in a big company, you never know it's because of you. And, and I know a lot of people who left company, they think they, they were indispensable and the company is going to fall apart. But no, but be, when you leave your startup, your company falls apart because everything is depending on you if, if you are the, the CEO and the founder. Um, so, so yes, I, I, I think it, uh, it, um, I, I don't, sorry, I don't remember the original question. So what's the cost, the price of entrepreneurship? Uh, the, the, so the, the cost, so uh, I, I think it's your, your stress, the level of stress you're going to have, uh, because entrepreneur is a, is a, hub, it's a constant up, up, down. You, you have a great news, you open a market, but then it's not working, you are mm. down. You recruit a great person. You fight with the person. It's it's a constant roller coaster. Uh, so you have to be ready for a ton of stress. Uh, also, you never, never, ever are on weekend, on vacation. It doesn't or exist. You don't sleep well. Uh, so, but you have other great things. But it's it's not a comfort zone. It's 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 not a a paradise. Uh, for, for, I mean, for me, uh, again, perhaps some people uh, have. have dream uh, and the dream become reality but I think it's it's a very tough experience yeah I think one of the most underrated factors is um, how taxing it is mentally yeah. so people when they start a company they just don't realize that the roller coaster of emotions of like uh, one day you're here. everything's amazing and you think you're going to revolutionize everything within two weeks or six months the day after everything is going to shit there's a million fires that you need to take care of. The following day you have again, and like this roller coaster, mental roller coaster is so violent for your mind. <laughs> it's something we'd never think before starting a company. And then you just like start to realize like, man, I don't even know like if, I mean, if, if I don't really believe in my thing and I have the drive, like my mental health is never followed because it's just too crazy for, for, for the mind and something you never think about before starting you, it's the last thing you think about like I'm going to have all these emotions and uh, because at the end of the day this your your company is like your baby and it's so you take everything very personally mm -hmm. and so probably at some point like the one of the key skills you develop is uh, to detach yourself from your emotions and whether something amazing happens or bad it doesn't really affect you anymore because that's how you protect yourself <laughs> from all this stuff so so what, what, what do most new entrepreneurs totally ignore when they embark on the, on the startup train? I think the, this emotion part is, is, is exactly what you describe. It's going to be like really amazing. But it's going to be really, really tough. And the lack of sleep, I, I would say, because you even dream about your problem. But you never dream, have a deep sleep. But so sometimes, you know, you just want to go out, drink and forget everything because you cannot detach. And I mean, if you manage to do it, uh, great for you. But I think 
the bigger your company becomes. You know, at the beginning, you're striking for money, fundraising, developing your ID, executing. But then the ID is here. Okay, you want to go bigger. You want to attract more funds. Uh, then you get bigger guys around you. We request more from you. And when you do one mistake, the impact is huge. At the beginning, you, you, you do your mistake, you switch, mm -hmm. you correct because you're a small entity. But the bigger you become, the bigger your impact has on the organization. And I remember some of my staff, uh, Maxime, telling me, you can't make decisions alone anymore, Joanna, because you, you don't realize how much ripple effect you have over the company. Mm -hmm. uh, so you are not alone anymore. And, and it's what I love at the beginning. I was very agile, but my agility become a weakness with the, the, the bigger you come. And the level of pressure you have, because you have raised more funds, you have more important people, you are in the press, you're opening new country, you find new partners. Uh, so no, for me, it's, it's very difficult to detach. What you can learn is when a, a, a super hard things hit you, you say, as long as you're not dead, nothing kills you. <laughs> I love yeah. this song. It's like, and, and there is a famous Chinese quote that say, uh, a bad news always come with a good news. And I always say myself, if Absolutely. it happened, it was a reason, especially when you lost. I remember at the beginning, losing people is very hard. And, and you, you're desperate, the person leaves, you have a big hole in your organization. And believe me, everybody is important at the beginning. And then a week after, you have an amazing person who yeah. pop up from nowhere and she completely changed your company. My latest HR, I had my, my previous HR left and, and she was more admin HR, you know, what you can afford at the beginning. And I know she had a lot of weakness. She left, I was done, and I find this amazing woman from anywhere who has changed my life. We were discussing about the importance of HR yeah. to protect you because yeah. you can't be indirect because the, the most difficult thing is a relation with people, whatever. It's your invest. So you have to deal with your investor. You have to deal with your customer. You have to deal yeah. with your distributor. You have to deal with the finance and then your people. And, and, and it's very emotional, as you say. So if you have someone to protect you there, it's very important. So yes. My advice is uh, a bad news always bring a. There's an opportunity. In every, there's an opportunity. In every it, uh, big, it's big a message. Bad well, situations. Because if you are very honest and ethical and you believe in what you do, there's a reason it's happening. It's it's, it's a, a warning and something you need to change. So this is the positive things I have found in entrepreneurship instead of uh, I carry you like I'm so bad. You know, especially women, we always complain about ourselves. Uh, it is a good reason it's happening. So reflect, take distance, and as long as you are not dead, you can continue. Exactly. Basically, if you never give up, you never die and you never fail. Exactly. That's what most people don't realize. They just think like, there is no fa like as long as you don't die, uh -huh. it's okay. And the good thing also <laughs> for us, I think you're like me, especially when you start from nothing, because you have some entrepreneur, we buy, acquire a company, develop it, and And I have a very good friend, Patrick Roger, he's a chocolate maker, very famous now in France. He started, he had no family money. He, he started his first chocolate factory and he has his first shop. And he said, I've done it so I can redo it, you know, mm. even if I collapse tomorrow. And yeah. I, I think it's, and perhaps my- Very empowering, my, yeah. And if you can accept, you can fail, you're less in a stress. He said, yeah, everybody, I'm very fragile. Everything could, you know, we, we were eaten by COVID and- You know, I pass through instead of, okay, mm. I'm done. You know, I was just opening my first boutique and, uh, and, and then I pivot to online. So uh, I think it's, it, what you need to is really how to overcome the, the difficulty in a, in a positive way. It's, it, it, it's tough, but... It's uh, just, yeah, it's basically the mindset and how you look, what, what angle do you look at things? I remember our first company, um, I was really like struggling to get the first client. And after a few months, I thought I would get them, but then they were not ready. So then they just said, oh, I'll come back in six months. And then we're basically like back to point zero. And then I was like, first I was like, this is terrible. There is two other people with three, like we're not going to have money. And then I just thought like, actually it's the same as if we we're on holidays, like we don't have a job and we don't have, we're not earning money. So it's not that bad, except that, We're not on holidays. We're just trying to like get another client. But like, it's always, how do you look at the thing? And it's never, it's never terrible as long as you're, as you have health and as you feel not too bad when you wake up in the morning. And absolutely. And, and you have this uh, confidence that you can build again, because if you have start from scratch again, you would be able to do it again. When you have built a house, you can build another house. 
So I think it's the most important. Don't be afraid to fail because you're going to fail tons of times. And what you and what you learn from your failure, you need to reflect. Yeah. If you instead of okay, I fail, I start again. No, reflect on your failure. I think it's the most important also. For me. So, mm. so you're saying building companies, a lot of work is nonstop. You never, you don't have. There's no like work and after work. Mm -hmm. There's no weekend. There's no holidays. Your brain is like constantly consumed. You you just never disconnect. So basically, it's kind of like an endless marathon. People say, oh, yeah, a uh, career should not be, or entrepreneurship or company should not should be a, a series of sprint. But actually, I mean, in, in the ideal world, yes, but the truth is not. It's like an endless marathon and it's a, that's it. It's a marathon and even an Iron Man, if you know it, a couple with sprint because you're, you're always in a sprint and then you continue to run and boom, you sprint. So it, it's a combo. I think marathon is a bit too short. Yeah, it's too it's short. Because you need to sprint. You don't even see the end. Exactly. Uh, so so how, do you, how do you last doing this endless Iron Man? But you need to find a way to resource yourself. And I think uh, you need to listen to your body. And, and, and sometimes you, you start to be really tired. And the more you get tired, the less you sleep. So I think sport is very important if you can oxygen. Because sport will oxygen your blood, bring you... Sometimes I go walking and I get ID, uh, sleep. If, you, if you're really tired, like, you cut for. Sometimes I fall apart at eight o'clock and I wake up at four, but I had a proper sleep. Uh, uh, and I think uh, as we were discussing, uh, meeting people also resource you, uh, other entrepreneurs. Yeah. Uh, that's really uh, the blessing. Uh, and it's difficult to stay open because you have so much work, but you say, no, I, I don't want to take this time. And then you meet the person and you learn tons of things. So keep uh, close contact with people. We, we bring you something and you can share and because you would be rich by a lot of people we want to, to, to be with you. And so I have consequently reduced my social life, which is sad, but, uh, but it's very qualitative. Uh, in my industry before, I was always out connecting. And mm. now when I see people, it's very qualitative. It's, uh, it's limited time. It's very precious. So you learn also to revalue your friend. Because people will stay when it's hard or helping you. And this one are your true friends and not when everything is glamorous. So it's, it's you re-evaluate your whole life. And when you spend time with your family, it, because they don't see you anymore, it has to be quality. Uh, but I think I, I have respect for my, my children and my husband. But what, at the beginning, it was a bit of complaint. But I think now they, they understand and they, they become proud of it. And uh, so the, the resourcing... It's something you really need to be careful, uh, your, 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 your mental health. And, uh, and, and you are tempted uh, sometimes to, to drink a bit, you know, to boost you. I, I, I smoke, you know, the, I vape, you, you mm -hmm. boost with nicotine. <laughs> and uh, it's, 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 very, it's the most dangerous part, I would say, and sleep deprivation. So if you feel your body is cracking, you, you, you need to, to come back. <laughs> T tell me about the most difficult problems that you worked on and how you solved them. I have tons of them. I mean, <laughs> the most difficult problem I had. That the, you worked on. I, I, when I opened my first boutique, I, I didn't realize you need like good, I thought I'm going to be in my boutique and serving people and, and no, because I have tons of meetings. So you recruit a, a cell team that can represent me because at the beginning you do everything, you have the knowledge, but you say, how do I replace Joanna, you know, when I'm not here and, uh, so I think to find people, we can understand how you think, what needs to be done. Uh, I, I think it's, again, the people that you can really trust. And, and sometimes you give them their trust, but it's a total failure. So you, 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 you burst and you, you're not happy, you're disappointed. So I think uh, building this team that you can really let it go, empower them, and, and you, you're proud of them because they give a good image of your company. So really the the people is the most difficult thing in a, in a company because they all come with this dream and they say, wow, I need to work like a dog. She's on me. She, and, 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 and because it's your brand. So if, when they do something wrong, it hurts you directly. Uh, so I think it, it's the biggest problem and the different level of it. At the beginning, you need uh, the Swiss uh, knife, you know, where you, are, you need people who are able to do tons of things, switch. And the more you grow, the more you need expertise in different areas. So it's why you cannot keep the same people forever because you, you go to the wall if you, mm. you keep your couteau suisse. And uh, so that, that's also the, the toughest things to make 
your people evolving with you. And I don't know until uh, when I will be able to be a CEO, but I'm not afraid about that because I know what I'm good at. Mm -hmm. And if I can go back at what I love and I can leave the finance, the admin, the, to someone else, I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid of that. How, how good would you say you are at delegating? Because you're talking about, oh, I need to recruit these oh. people, but like this, this person should be uh -huh. able to replace me. And that's one of the big problems when you start a company, you think I, that you need to do everything because you are the one who knows this and that and better than others. And e there's a, an ego side, obviously, yeah. which is every entrepreneur has like a big ego, but also like, you know, I, I need the I control. Don't, I don't think it's an ego. I don't think it's, a, I was the best person to delegate in my previous corporate life because I was surrounded by expert people. You have the okay. money to recruit people who are even better than you. And you want to work less because you are in the corporate. You want to cash your big salary and you want to go on your vacation, <laughs> your seven. So you, you have... You, even you, are, you were saying you that. You love to delegate. You <laughs> love to empower. You love to... You are so good. Like, uh, so I'm, I'm very good at this game. But the, the entrepreneurship is not about the control. It's like, If it's badly done, it, it ruins your company. Yeah. When you are in a big group like LVMH L'Oréal, there is a mistake. There is like tons of people to correct your mistake. But when you take someone and they do a mistake, like I give you an example, you now I open Middle East with Shalou Group, which is massive. And when they do a, a wrong order and the, the, the things arrive broken, it, it ruined the company. You, it just took me two years to get this contract. And if my production team ruined it, So I, I go and check every shipment at the beginning because okay. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a full loss, punto, you, 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 two years of work. So I think people assimilate that to super control. And as an entrepreneur, what is very new for me, you need to be super detailed and super zoom out because you need to have your vision at five years, but you need to be in every detail because you are still executing. You're still being, you remember the, the example of the house, you know, if you put the wrong the wall wrong at the beginning, the, the whole house is going to be shaky. Yeah. So you are building your foundation. So you need to be really much into the detail, but you know you want to build a castle at the end. So you need more people, you need more stuff. So it's why it's very difficult. You constantly zoom in and zoom out. And, and I don't like when we say we're a control freak, we are just responsible, we, we work hard and we don't want anyone to destroy that. But With time, you, you find people and you have also more money to hire experts who are mm -hmm. highly responsible. It's also a level of maturity with the people you have around you. And uh, no, no, I have nobody to, to, to delegate. I have a new marketing director, 20 years of Chanel. She's, I'm lucky to have her because she didn't find a job in, in Singapore. It, it's a totally different relation. I'm a, I'm, I need her. I'm always... What do you think? What should we do? Uh, she told me, you don't need to be in this school. I love it. So give me like 10 experts. Uh, I can pay uh, a high amount of money for them to execute their job. Uh, I will be more happy to delegate. But I, I really get this blame. You are too involved and it's, it's, it's so wrong because you don't know the cost. It, 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 you, you have to pay if you don't get involved. Yeah, people don't realize the full uh, uh, picture and uh, yeah. how important all these little things that add up will basically result in something being successful or not. They don't realize is, uh, is, the, is the sum of all these small details that make the, 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 the thing working and much better. So you said you were working for big companies before you were earning something like one million per year. As your previous employer, you had three kids at home. So pretty much living a very comfortable life. I, I was on the high because I want a high career also. So, you know, in the corporate world, as a woman, you need to do I, I was working hard, but... I never had this stress, this level of emotion. So, yeah, so, so the question is, what made you leave this amazing career and the comfort that comes with it to start a company? Because I, I, like you, I saw a lot of weakness in the perfume industry. I'm, I'm really an expert. I have worked with all the, 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 okay. the, the best brand. I have developed so many perfume. I have worked with so many types of people. And I, I see the, the, the consumer coming to me, Joanna, my perfume doesn't last, everything smells the same. I don't know how to choose. I go to Sephora and even me, I go to Sephora and depressed. I was like, and every year I was like uh, creating a hundred of perfume. I was, uh, you know, they ask us to do all these consumer tests to do one fits whole. But, oh, you need to please the French, the German, the American, now the Chinese, now the Arab. It's impossible. So you do a me too. So I wasn't enjoying my work anymore. I love mm. creation. That's my passion. 
And I was even using AI, can you imagine, to do formula that can please everybody. So uh, I, and the AI part was a fun part, but as soon as I mastered it, I, I, I was bored. So uh, for me, I, 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 did, I lost my passion. I lost my soul. That was the reason I come into this industry. And as I told you, I had always this idea to become an entrepreneur. It was inside me. And it, it's why it took me, I would say, seven years to, to make the decision. And then I have a fantastic encounter with a, a coach. Uh, I was always asking training in, because I, I, I love to learn, as I explained to you. And I met this guy that pointed out, you know, you're, you're not happy in IFF because you're not doing what you wish to do. So he really pushed me. He, this guy, I'm really thankful. Sometimes I hate him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, do, he, he did a lot of work on me. It took a, a year. And imagine if... Uh, do you think you'd have started a company without meeting the right person? Yeah, like I, what's, I the, what's needed to take the leap, especially when you're in it's, such a comfortable you know, it's, career it's, and set You know, it's like the, we say the drop that make the, 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 the glass go yeah, over. Yeah, the, 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 so the, you are the straw that brings the camel back. Yeah. You are putting all your drops together and when the, the glass is full and you just leave. Uh, so, so, yeah, no, no, I, I don't think it's one thing. It's, it's, mm. uh, it's, again, it's your level of motivation and uh, people help you, of course. <laughs> Let's talk about the real stuff now. Okay. Which okay. is... It can be very lonely to be at the top, which a lot of people don't realize. They think, oh, this person is an entrepreneur, very inspiring, oh, very strong, et cetera. But like, obviously you need to show the example to like all the stakeholders, employees, everyone that you're strong, but, and you, you need to be strong to be an entrepreneur, but you take all the responsibilities on your shoulders and even people who support you and work with you will actually never really get you, except if they're building businesses themselves. <laughs> so how do you deal with with this? But you, you deal with it. This is your reality. And you even, uh, as I was explaining, for me, I needed to cut the, the social part because it, it, you, your day is 20 hours. So how are you going to make the most of it? It's, it's not having a, a chit-chat with your friends or going uh, to the polo club. To, uh, you need to be focused. So you isolate yourself, I think. Uh, and you, wh whatever you do, you, there is a purpose. And uh, but I'm, I'm, I think as an entrepreneur, we're quite lonely and strong character. So for me, that wasn't the, the hardest things. Uh, I still love to go out, but uh, uh, no, for, you're very lonely and it, it's true when you have things we hit you. I have the chance I can share with my husband. Uh, I have few people with who I can share, but sometimes you, you f I, I think, as you say, you need uh, emotional support with, with people uh, who love you and, and know you are doing your best and, and especially when Ted, you, you have done everything you can and you, you need to let it go. Uh, and your employee will never un understand you, as you say, they don't have your stress. So don't expect anything from them also because it's, they are not pay for that, uh, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, don't expect them to work as hard as you, yeah. obviously. And also um, people always think, my boss, I mean, this is my boss. And what I don't realize is basically each of your clients and each of your employees are your boss because if you don't get, if you don't get the cash in, if you don't get the investment, if you don't get the clients to not only yeah. buy the product, but pay, which is another thing, the cash flow, like people will leave. So like actually the more people you have on board, the more you are, you're not the boss, like you are the, everybody's your boss except you and people don't really realize it's that. that. Yeah, they don't realize it's just like, there's the, mo the, the, the money at the end of the month and if, if the salary is not there one day, they were like, what the fuck is happening with this company? And was uh, in, uh, another thing <laughs> also, a big mistake I did when they, I was quite successful raising money because I'm, I, I have a great idea. My project is great. People see developing. But as soon as employees see the cash coming, they think it's a big party, guys. And I think it has been the mistake <laughs> of a lot of money coming in. Okay, let's go crazy. And, and no, a penny is still a penny for me and they need to understand that. And I had a, I, when I, I had my Siri, hey, I engaged uh, a general manager. He was, a, he was spending like crazy. And I have been very reasonable. And it's, it's why people trust me to come back and put more money in my yeah. company. But if you start to burn and you want to be a bit comfortable, you know, but no, you can't. And yeah. whatever you raise, your first million, your first three million, your first 10 million, you need to be extremely cautious with money. And it's one of my mantras, you don't tell to the, to the people you know, how much money you have in the bank account. It, it reminds me something. In our first company, we, I hired our first employee. 
So we're three co-founders and then we hired our first employee and the co-founder, we're really paying ourselves almost, I mean, like not a great salary. So like basically the first employee was paid three times more, which was like a pretty decent salary for his experience, et cetera. <laughs> so he was there like, and I mean, basically one day he sold the bank account because we had good money in the bank account, but like we were just very careful. And the reaction of this person seeing like, ah, you have that much money, therefore I should be paid more and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And just there like, man, like we haven't paid each other for the first entire year. Second, you were paying each other like peanuts. And now we're paying each other a bit more than peanuts. You're being paid three, four times more than us. And the reaction of the person is, um, is very interesting. It's very interesting. Because they don't understand you get money to develop, not to... Yeah, they think it's your money in your pocket, but it's not. not it's, it's not. It's not. And if you're a respectful <laughs> entrepreneur, you're super careful with it because it's not your money. And yeah. I have tremendous respect for my, my investor. So, yeah, I think my advice, never show your bank account except to your financial director. Make sure your finance director doesn't speak about it. And uh, that's a very important position. People need to feed. We, we, we need to grow. We need to be very careful. And, and again, uh, if they saw you also burning money, they, you, you, you don't send the right message because a startup needs to be very careful. You always fragile whatever the size you are. Because as I, I tell you, big mistake cost a lot of money. Yeah. The more you grow, the more you need to be careful. How do you avoid bringing home or into your personal relationships all your business-related anxieties? You don't is, avoid. Is it even possible? You don't avoid. You bring it home and you hope your home is going to help you. <laughs> but they have to take it in their face. So it's why, I, again, I say it. Make sure you have a strong environment around you to mm. absorb and sometimes, uh, you know, you just, I, I love animals and you just take uh, your cat or your rabbit and, and you, you animal can me because they don't speak. And, uh, <laughs> but of course, you're going to bring back your, you cannot close you the door. I told you, it's impossible. Yeah. And sometimes everybody's sleeping. I go downstairs, you cry and you, you go back and you, you need to, uh, you don't even want to show to your family you are such in need of I remember my first board meeting uh, the company was not taking off and I, I had like, it's, it's horrible. Nobody can understand. And you feel that it's, it's even physical what you feel, the, the, the pressure. It's, mm. it's something indescriptible. And I never had it in the corporate world. And I was thinking I was working like a dog, but it, yeah. it's nothing. Mm. So I'll start with, first with, with my story. So then you, maybe you feel better about it. Okay. But you talk about crying. I remember our first company, we were three co-founders and we had some co-founders issue pretty quick early on. Like one of the guys was really good in terms of how technical he was, but he was a terrible team player. So he would basically do everything on his side to then come and try to get more shares, okay. justify more shares by the, the work he was doing. Okay. So after a few months, we realized we need to fire him. So I had to go and fire him. And I remember being there, like just with the two other co-founders and being there and like, just like, crying which was i was like this is so ridiculous it's the last thing i, I ever thought would happen by mm. building a company you know mm. and yet i'm here like firing the dude after three or four months and I'm crying like a mm. like a baby and i'm i was 23 or 24. so have you have you i mean you said before like going downstairs crying like have you ever felt like you were close to totally burning out or abandoned but I would, yes, uh, more by exhaustion, exhaustion because exhaustion. when you don't sleep, everything amplifies mm. and you feel that, you know, it's, it's, it's like when you, you, you're in sleep depression. And I, I think it had an impact of the way I was talking to people because everything becomes big uh, and you don't realize you don't because realize. you are in a parallel world and you, you want to continue and, and, and you sleep less and, uh, you, 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 it, and I was taking some pills, you know, to... Mm to sleep less and, uh, and, and, and peace to sleep fast. And uh, so this is where you need to be careful when your body is cracking. Uh, this is my, my advice for me. Always keep this, this minimum of healthy life to, to protect yourself. What, what can an entrepreneur's uh, relatives do to support him or her the best when going through the, the startup roller coaster? So what, 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 what do you think is the best reaction you know, for example, someone is very sad, not, nothing to do with, mm-hmm. uh, with uh, entrepreneurship. Someone is very sad. The only thing they'll, they'll tell you, the only thing they, uh, they, they, they ask is just being listened. You don't even need to say anything. Mm-hmm. So what should relative do 
to best support an entrepreneur that is going through this crazy roller coaster? Well, for me, giving you perspective, uh, because you are in your things and you yeah. see only that and you say, okay, what do we have? Okay. And then they say, worst, worst case, okay, you lost your startup, you go back to work, you know what you know. Uh, so, okay, just, just try. It. And if, if again, <laughs> when you know you have, you have built a career and you have expertise, and you build a startup and, and it fails, then you, have, you can try another one. So I think giving you perspective, this is not the end of the world and you still have healthy kids. Uh, you are in, you, you, we have enough to survive to eat every day. I mean, it's, it's, so I think, yeah, listening and, uh, and giving you advice. I mean, it's not only relatives. Sometimes uh, it could be people who are really outside of your industry. And uh, I had some very interesting conversation with people who are still in the corporate and they tell me, yeah, we do that, do that. And, uh, Uh, so I think it's reflecting uh, with others that, that will give you perspective. There is another world outside of your company. But the best uh, advice, that the best people you, you should find after when you are really stuck. So let's get back to the founding of Maison. So you have an idea. You will disrupt the perfume world, but you can't do it alone. I, 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 will, disrupt, I will bring back creativity in the perfume world that I was really missing. Uh, disrupt is a, is a strong because I'm not going to change a 55 billion dollar company which is led by L'Oréal, LVMH. I mean, these guys are here for a long time and they've built empire and I have tremendous respect for that. But they are missing something today that I, I, I want to bring back and I'm, I will be happy to share with them. Uh, I'm, I'm not here to destroy mm. them. I'm just happy to show them a new light that uh, people have different needs today because when you are in a monopoly, as you say, you're in your comfort zone, you don't recreate new things. And mm. it was, you remember we discussed about the Blackberry. We all love our Blackberry. And then the iPhone comes. I said, never, I, I want my dash, my, my board. And, mm. and then you learn. The, and if today I take your iPhone for something new, you're not going to be happy. So I think we were used in this. And, and I, I saw that we can do something better. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm here to bring back what we're missing because we are all passionate in the industry. We want to, to push the boundary, to, to create new scent. Uh, I want to, to create something for you that really fits your personality, where you are. And you remember, I told you this sentence, we remember 35% of what we smell, 5% of what we see, 2% of what we hear. And people underestimate the power of this sense because you don't see it, you're going to touch it. And you, it's not your first priority. Your first priority is your dress, your makeup, your mm -hmm. hair. But I told you, if you date a girl, she's beautiful. But ah, the smell. The like, smell is Ten years there. later, you smell the perfume, you're like, oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> so I think for me, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. also Absolutely. a question of education. And <laughs> I think also what the industry has done, because we are in a, a monopoly, you know, it's a bit like in the communism, you have no interest to educate people because you want to follow your way of thinking. So now I'm re-educating people to think, you know, you, why you're able to cook your meal and to choose your ingredient and you want to cook a light meal or you want to do something super heavy, uh, fondue. But the same in perfumery, I can give you, I can first help you to understand what you like and what you don't like because when you buy your perfume, it's really made and you want to look like Julia Robert buy this perfume, but there is vanilla that you hate and you buy it because someone told you and you... It's like, you know, when someone forced you to buy your dress and you bring it home and it doesn't fit you, you never wear it. Uh, so first I want, because it's, it's quite an investment. A perfume is something you're going to keep for three, six months. Yeah. It's, you're sending a message about yourself. So be sure to choose something you like and, and to choose the right message. You're going to, because I, I remember I had a, an, a, a lady in my office and she was wearing Angel on the morning at eight o'clock. It was horrible for the whole office and don't don't wear the a sexy super overpowering perfume when mm. you go to the office for your colleague you want to go dancing in la vie uh, be bold but uh, also educating people about the, what ingredient is going to provoke you know uh, around you so this is also the purpose because we're, we're really losing education and each time i talk about perfume i see people like looking at me asking questions so there is a lack of education in this industry that i, I want to bring back Because in, in French, in France, we say les, les violettes poussent à l'ombre. We say the, 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 the violets grow in the shadow. So that means it's a grassoir, the center that is a, the less you tell about your knowledge, the more you will last. But we saw today it's completely different. We are in a sharing economy. It's yeah. very open mind. Absolutely. So that the first thing I did, I put all my knowledge online and 
a big podcast like you, uh, you, you can find what is in your formula. So this one really is, is, is eating and shaking my industry because when you buy a perfume and it's all about rose, how much rose do you have exactly? Nobody tell you. They, 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 you have aqua, alcohol and perfume. But what is in your perfume? So this is all these funny things that mm. really interest me and, and that interest people that I'm, I'm bringing with Maison. So you spotted this opportunity, but obviously you cannot do it alone in no. the beginning. So, and because as we say, faster alone, further together. So how do you build a team that will help you achieve your goals when in the beginning, the only thing you have to motivate them is an idea? So it's, as we say, it's easy to motivate people to follow you. And especially, you know, when you start, you attract a lot of young people. We don't need a lot of money. They're happy to be in a startup is how you keep them and how they fit what you need. Because you have a lot of blind spots. You remember what I told you, you are an expert in, mm. in perfume. But for me, building the perfume was easy. But how to sell them in retail, how to build the... A, a, a digital platform where you do personalization. You know, I cannot take uh, one of the ready websites, so I had to build everything. And then how you advertise, how you do your SEO, your SEM, your paid ad, how you do logistics, how you're going to scale up, how you open new country, how you get the legal part about what you're doing, you start to mix. So all these blind spots, you, you have no idea at the beginning who you're going to recruit. So I think it's And you, It's more down and the also road. you don't have the skills, so you're not able to judge the person who, exactly. who you're going to hire. Yeah, so yeah. what do you do? Do you go with your, your friends? Well, you, like, what do you no, do? No, but Because you, do, you do a lot of mistakes. You, you <laughs> hire people, you, we sell them themselves. And, and then I think one important thing is why I want to do everything in my company. Uh, and after I, I need to let it go because I understand what I need. And where I will never, as I say, the, 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 the digital, I, I'm not a digital native. I have learned tons of things, but... I would love to just study that and you can learn everything on the internet, I say Elon Musk, but I don't have time to spend five hours on, on no. podcasts. So, but I know what I need and I know how to recognize someone which is passionate about their expertise. So I'm much better in, in recruitment now and you do less mistakes because it costs you tons of stress and tons of money. So recruitment, I think in every company is so key. So we talk about the HR position, which is very important. Because even the story of your friend, when you had to lay out your friend because you feel the problem, if you had a HR, she will have start to address the problem. You should be, uh, you know, some warning. So they know, you know, and, and they're not at ease with what they're doing. They know when what he was doing was not the right thing and you have to wait the explosion and you end up badly. But when you have a HR, it starts to be addressed. And, yeah. and when you open the door, they expect it. Yeah. So it's less painful. So, so you're building a company, you're growing, but leading a team of 10 people requires, I mean, let's say building a team of 50 or 100 people requires different skills than leading a team of 10 people, which means that obviously you have to hire people, but you have to fire them because your company mm -hmm. is growing and someone who was doing a great job in a smaller company is not going to be able to do the same great job in a bigger company because it, diff it requires different skills, which a lot of people don't understand. A lot of people think, especially co-founders is the same. Co-founder mm -hmm. could be amazing to start, but at some point, like you, 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 you don't do the, you're not fit for the job anymore. Mm -hmm. And so, so how is the crazy employee hiring and firing linked to the different phases of a startup? Mm -hmm. And maybe you can explain to people why it's normal. Then in most startups, you have what we call a high employee turnover, which yeah. is a lot of firing and hiring. Yeah. And I heard that, oh, you have such a high turnover. I'm like, no, because Happens I still have everywhere. people who are still here. But, uh, and I, I would say perhaps is to let them go instead of firing. Because if, let as go. I say, you have been a system that send warning, you are not doing that. You, 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 and they realize I'm, I'm, I'm not fit for yeah. this company anymore. I have learned a lot. So I have people who have left where I was super happy. I've learned a lot and uh, they want to do something else. And I can understand because the level of stress you have, they don't want to go with you forever. And uh, they want to go back to a normal life. They can, and a lot of people who have worked at Maison, they find an amazing job after because uh, they, they, they can show what they have built from mm. scratch. So it's the best CV you can have being in a, In a startup, uh, you have suffered, but you say, hey, I did. Hey, I survived two or three years there. Yeah, I and, survived and, six and I was the creative director <laughs> and I've built this campaign. This is me, you know, with uh, no money, you yeah. know. And so 
this is amazing. And, and yes, you have people we don't understand and, and, and then it, it clash, of course. But for me, <laughs> uh, leading a company of 10, 100 people is the same for me. It's, it's how you surround yourself with experts mm. and, and they have the right motivation, they have the right goal. But if you have the level of expertise you need, it's the same to pilot 100 people. A thousand people. Uh, if you, so for me, it's not a challenge for me to, to manage four or five people or a hundred of people. And I've seen that in the corporate because I've been in small entity, big entity. Uh, so I'm not afraid of that, I would say. You're not afraid, but still there is so much happening, hiring, letting people go, mm-hmm. which goes, I mean, you need to not have a problem with uh, kind of conflicts and people not liking you, which is b- because, because oh, yeah, that's what it is to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. So, so, and you even mentioned that you had sometimes some family members of staff that you let go that would come to your place on a Saturday afternoon, which is pretty crazy. So how do you detach yourself mentally from all the, I, I this hiring, firing that happens? I in just the started to detach because uh, I hire a child again, I tell you, she exactly, protects HR, you. Yeah. She protects you and she will give an objective image because it's so emotionally connected when you have hired the people, you have developed the business with them, you are super. But when it's a proper recruitment with many people and there is KPI who are in place and they have to fill the KPI and if not, then you give the first warning, then I think it's it's the way to go and I think I have found my way today. So it's, it's, it's less emotional and people will still attack you. But if you have done the proper way, you have address and and, and then they can attack and you win and, and, and you continue. So I'm much more relaxed now. Uh, is, is where I'm less relaxed when I need to hire someone. And sometimes you are in a hurry and you, because you need to fill the position. As a startup, you know what is it? When you grow really fast, uh, I need a digital manager, you know, and you take the guy and he's so-so. And then, okay, so you start to look for another one. And because recruiting takes a lot of time, a lot of interview, it's, it's the time you don't put in your development. Uh, so I'm more worried about recruiting the right people uh, than letting the people that doesn't fit the, the structure, I would say. Because it, again, it's good for them. They have learned things and they can move to something else. And yeah, I think a startup is a fantastic way to, to learn from, for anyone. Nice. Let's talk about raising money and responsibilities. So you raised, I believe, about 7 million since the beginning. How do you go about raising money for a startup? Not 7 million in one. So I, I did a few rounds. Uh, I think the first one is the most difficult one because you just have an idea and uh, your passion and uh, uh, like you, you people promise and the last minute they they, they revoke and it's it's, mm. it's it's really a roller coaster. The fundraising, uh, uh, it's it's super interesting. Uh, you have to put your ego on the size, uh, but yeah, for me the first one was the most difficult one. And after I had the chance. Uh, to meet people from the industry that saw the potential of the ID and they were quite rich. So I think it's important also to take, especially when you're really at the beginning, to take money from people. If if you fail, it's not going to change their life. Mm. You need to be very careful with that. And they know what they're putting their foot into. Uh, and then you go down the road, you, you, you're going to start to have people who are going to require a lot from you because if they put money, they want the return on investment. But when it's a business angel, you know that out of 10 startups, you will have one who work. And one of my first investors was the CEO of Webedia in France. And I was a bit disappointed because he's quite a, a, a rich guy, well, well uh, achieved. And uh, I thought he's going to put like 100, 200K and last minute he gave me 50K. And he told me uh, two years after, he invited me to, to take a cup of champagne and say, you are the only startup I invest this year that is still alive. Still alive. So he was like really impressed. And he told me, I, I put on you because of your personality. I, I didn't really uh, understand anything about perfumery, but I, I think a lot of business angels, they, they see like the, the, the founder is, is so important. And I think they need to see also you have something to lose. So when you tell them you're, you're quitting your job, you're very well paid, you have a family, mm. I, I put also my own money. Mm. Uh, and I had another entrepreneur friend, he say, and I was trying to do a bit of business with him. And he said, Joanna, as long as you have nothing to lose, you will be never successful in entrepreneurship. So when you are, you know, in the in the emptiness and you have no more job and you need to make it work, whatever it takes, 
so that, that's really my advice for the people. We, we don't raise money and think it's, it's easy. It's like people will invest on you on the first round if you really have something to lose and you're on, on board with them because they are taking a huge risk. Even if they're rich and you would discover like the richest they are, the more greedy they are. <laughs> Sorry about that's that. That's where they got rich. Exactly. That's, what, that's no, where they stay I, rich. I swear myself, never like that. <laughs> if one day I have the chance to be very comfortable, uh, I mean, you, you need to let it go. And, and one time money doesn't make you happy. Yeah? No money doesn't make you happy, but also money is, is not the key. It helps in a lot of things. It, for me, money is freedom. Uh, so money buys you the freedom to do what you want to do. Uh, so, so that, that's very important. So, so the more you go down the round, the more professional you need to be. It's all about how you, but you know, even with the figure, you can make the figure in a way we were discussing that yesterday, it, it looked great. And, uh, so I think you need to be very authentic and, and discuss also your problem with your investor. This is my challenge today. This is how I'm, I'm trying to fix it. And, and if they see down the road, you deliver what you promise and you don't over promise. They will continue to follow you, whatever, because if you continue to develop, not at the space you were planning to, but there is a reason why, especially my business model is very complex because it's a mix of tech, of uh, perfumery, retail, uh, digital, and, and, and it takes time to scale up. And I need to reinforce my base to be able to scale because if you scale up too fast, you, you can collapse. So uh, I think they understand today I, I want to slow down. I want to duplicate my model because it's not because you have done a market super successful, but it, the next market is going to be successful that I discover also. I say, oh, I have a great receive uh, in Singapore. So now let's go to Korea. And you are mm -hmm. in Korea. It's like, wow, it's another animal. And then you go to Middle East. And so it's, it's, it's very difficult also to scale up. And sometimes you, you really need to strengthen your, your core model. Uh, to, to, to be able to scale up and, and your entrepreneur need to understand why you do that and when you don't deliver like 300% growth, there is a reason and, and they need to follow you. So, so keep a very honest uh, line with your entrepreneur. Don't let them step into your business. They're here as advisor to open door for you, uh, to, to distress you when they can. Uh, it, it's like we were discussing who can help you reflect you. I think if you have good entrepreneur, they should be able to push you, but also to, to give you reflection, a look at what you have achieved. And uh, uh, so finding good investor is important. And sometimes you cannot be picky because you really need the money. But the yeah, more absolutely. Grow, so, yeah. so how do you choose the investors if you have the luxury to do so? The, 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 the blind spot, again, they, they're going to bring things that you don't know. So how do you know they're going to be able to bring things? I have, I have an example, for example, for, mm -hmm. again, our, one of our business, the only time we, we actually raised money, we didn't need the money, but there was this... Then don't raise. If you but, don't need money, don't raise. Yeah, but we had, this, <laughs> we had this client that were basically saying since two years, oh, we love what you're doing. Come to another country. Come there. Okay, we, we're going to invest in your, in your company there and we're going to give you our network, etc. And then it just ended up after two years of like going to, to, to see their offices and it was growing, growing. I was like, I almost had some FOMO and I was like, okay, we need to do that. So we do it, but like they... They never really delivered. So how do you know in advance how you, much they can? You never know in advance, but you see how people are connected, what are their position in which industry, which company. Uh, I think it's like when you recruit, you know, perhaps you're going to do a few mistakes, but uh, investor, you, you know who is coming into your company and you will do many meetings with them. You will see how, you know, perhaps the, the first meeting is always great. Everybody shake hands and, yeah. and then you see them, they're a bit more stressed. They treat you badly. They don't answer to you. I mean, you, you, it, it takes time to raise money for a good reason because it's, it's, it's a dating and then you get the uh, fiancé and then you're married and, the and then dance, sometimes yeah. you divorce <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, and it's like a couple, you know, you're going to no. go through up and down. And uh, so, yeah, the relation with your investor is, is very important and, and it's why it's important to choose your investor. But sometimes you don't always choose and, and you have to, to go with it because money is, is uh, le nerf de guerre, as we say in French, is, yeah. is your blood. So if you don't have money, you cannot develop your company. So you are basically... As you say, like sometimes you need the money or often you need the money. And then there's basically this trade-off, which is I need the money versus I want to have the best investors on board. But in the ideal world, in the ideal, in the ideal world, that would happen. But in the real world, the, the real world is not ideal. So what are the risks 
the biggest risk when you choose your investors? What are, what are all the ways that as an entrepreneur, again, first time you raise money, you don't really know. No. Uh -huh. uh, what are all the ways you can get screwed by your investors? And I'm thinking about the Steve Jobs story, you know, mm -hmm. where he was basically kicked out of his own Apple company at some point. Yeah, I mean, it's an extreme caricature where his company becomes so big and there is so much money at stake. For me, I will avoid the big fund uh, first because this is not their money and uh, they, they, whatever they, they lose or they win, they will make money. So again, if you take really the money from the people, uh, I, I prefer to have this kind of investor. Yeah. And then you have family office that are really responsible. Uh, but the big fund, you know, when you go there, you, you lose the control. And so be really sure you need the money and you have an exit plan because you, you're losing a bit your soul uh, if you go big and, and you really need this big fund. And I think also down the road, the more you develop, you, you, the more you know what you need. For me, my next fundraising, I know exactly what type of investor mm -hmm. and I'm going to contact them. And they're going to be interesting for the right reason. So don't talk to people that are not fit to you. It's your choice also, because at the end of the day, a fundraising is a, is a marathon. And a, so you need, you have also little time because you need to continue to, to run your company, as you know. Uh, and uh, investors are all around the world. So if you do a meeting in London and then in Asia, and then you need to go to the US, you, you're going to exhaust yourself. So really put your target. And you put 10 and you say, I need like two of them. And you're going to do the, the, and perhaps with the, the, the different meeting you will have, you, people will tell you your weakness, why you are not investing so you can correct your speech. So, you know, you have also the training. Mm -hmm. and, and then when you're going to talk to the really important what you want, you know all the questions because they all have the same kind of question at the end of the day. Especially when you go to this level where you need 10 million or another level of amount, they, they all have the same kind of KPI and, and worried about what you're going to deliver and, and what would be the exit with them. So you prepare your fundraising don't, and don't la wait the last minute or so to be in a hurry because they would yeah, smell it. Absolutely. So this is, again, like a company, it's something you prepare, you anticipate and you bid yourself, lead, don't. Don't, don't be led uh, for fundraising. That's my advice. What, what's the pressure and level of responsibility that comes towards investors when you raise it's huge. a lot of money? It's, it's, it's like it's, you, you, you are responsible of this money. You are responsible to make the right usage of it. You have, uh, because even if these people are rich, they have probably uh, spent a life to get rich. So you need to, and, and I, I don't like it, say, oh, he's rich, but he, 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 he probably sweat tears to become rich, even if it's his job come and invest in my company. He didn't become his job by chance. So you have to have tremendous respect because it's, it's a wide board. When they come at your company, they have no idea what is the real reality because you always want to show your best side. Mm. Uh, so no, I, I have tremendous respect. And as you say, when the, the, the money is on the bank account, don't make a big party on it. And for me, as soon as the money, I, I don't know if you had this feeling, you, you, you should be released because, okay, you can continue with the pressure you have. It's the opposite effect for me. The, the, the more you raise, the, the more pressure you have because you have big expectation and they put big trust in you because it's, it's, it's yeah. a, that means, wow, they consider me, they trust me at this level. I need to deliver it's what they expect. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So investors, I mean, depending which kind of investor you deal with, but investors like or want to see what we talked a bit about before and even yesterday, these nice projections, you know? Cool. So you have the projection of the yeah. investors, yeah. but then you have the reality of the business. Mm -hmm. So can you give maybe some examples so people really understand the disconnect or disconnection between the kind of investors predictable framework, you know, with nice lines and charts. So, so the investors are going to make a decision based on that. And then the actual, you might say, oh, now we raise this money. We show these nice projections or charts or whatever, but oh fuck, now we actually need to do it and deliver in this very unpredictable world uh, of the entrepreneur that is basically mm -hmm. in the trenches fighting for its life every day. So like, Can you tell us, no, can I, you tell us about that? Again, you need to be reasonable in your projection. You need to show up, but don't do it too much because as you say, you, if you know you're not able to deliver and, and I have a, 
a partner who always wants to pump it up the figure, I, I disagree because I know what I don't <laughs> have to know. Pump up the figures to get more money, but then... Exactly. It's, 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 and again, it takes six months at least to raise money. So if you put like a projection like that and they see you are not, then you're going to disappoint them and it can even kill the deal. Yeah. So be very reasonable. You can put a, an optimist scenario and... So for me, I was supposed to to boom in China starting last of India, and you you know what happened in China. Mm. Uh, so we had to downsize the figure, and 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 it's okay, you know. You explain it's China is I cannot open behind there. So as long as you explain, uh, but I I will never put a promise on the table. I, I don't feel I'm able to deliver. So as long as you're aligned with your guts and you you, you know it's going to be hard, but you can do it. And sometimes also you have the downsides, but you have positive things you didn't expect. Last year, I get a huge business. Uh, uh, I told you with Ferrari, uh, we won a contract we were not supposed to, to where they want to bespoke the scent of each car they sell in Asia. And it was a big check and I never put it in my BP. And, but I never ever thought that China is going to be locked down for three months. Mm. Uh, where I was supposed to have a boutique open uh, last December. And uh, so, so... And it's what, what is difficult is to predict what is really going to happen. But I think down inside of you, you know how fast you can. For me, if I promise I'm going to triple my company, I'm not able to do it. The time to recruit the people to have the impossible. So uh, at the beginning, it's easy to double you, 1 million, 2 million. But now from uh, for 5 million to 10 million, it's another company. So yeah. you need to be super reasonable. And honestly, if you are an honest entrepreneur, you, you know what you can deliver. And especially when you when you do acquisition, that's another strategy. You're gonna buy sales, but I don't do that because my model is unique. Uh, and uh, and so I, for me, it's it's not a problem to to be honest. And and you're gonna have some difference, but as long as you can explain, your your investor will follow you, and you will attract more investor because, as mm. you say, your size change, and you need different type of investor. So be honest, so you can sleep at night, basically. Yeah, also. <laughs> For everything in life. Yeah. What, what makes your day? What makes my day? Yeah, what makes you happy? But when you have uh, opened a new market, uh, like yesterday, uh, we, we just got, the, it was an email at uh, 11, you know, I wanted to sleep early because I know tonight we're going to, and uh, okay, I look at my email and 11.30, we are accepted in Changi Airport. It's a huge wow, achievement okay. to enter in duty free. Uh, in Terminal 1, which is, uh, you know, only like the best, best brand get there. Uh, so that was a fantastic news. So I was, I sleep happy yesterday night. <laughs> so, Slept like a baby. Perhaps tonight I open my computer after. I will have a... And then there uh, is some shit. <laughs> there is shit coming in. <laughs> so, Obviously. So yeah, the good news, what makes you happy or to see someone happy. Uh, that's, you see someone has achieved something. They're like super. When, when I see my people laughing and... Uh, and so if we love too much, I'm, I start to be stressed because I say, okay, we are not working. <laughs> and so, but yeah, when, when we have a burst of, or when you manage to crack the product you are developing, you know, for a month and the prototype, we're super exciting. When the prototype arrives, you know, you develop a, a new candle, a new, you know, the, the work to develop a, a bottle of perfume with the, the glass, the pump, the design, it's... And we are so excited when all the samples arrive, we touch it. With, uh, so there is, the, the, again, the creative part but makes my day. Uh, and, and yesterday night, I went to the boutique and I, I had a very important meeting with an investor. And it was 8, 8.30 and the last customer entered. And she was, you know, an old woman. And I saw she was talking to my staff. And after my meeting, I went to her and said, yeah, how can I help you? And she said, she, she take an old bottle that was two years old. And she said, I want to refit, but I, I don't remember which scent I have mixed. I said, don't worry, ma'am. And by nose, I just recognized what is inside. And I saw she had spark in her eyes and she discovered I was a founder. And she told me, it was a super encounter, you know, and it made my evening yesterday night just meeting this lady who was one of my first customers coming back. And she said, it's so great. I said, why? It took you two years to use your perfume. Because she said, I only use it for special occasion because it's my perfume. I was like, wow, this is, this is cool. What's your biggest life learning? Uh, always learn. You never arrived. <laughs> <Like that. laughs> this is, this is like, when you understand that, you, and you will be happy because you have always something uh, to develop. To, I, I think the people, we, we say, oh, I want to be on retirement, do nothing. Uh, this is the last thing I expect. I always yeah. want to... But two things that I like to do. Uh, that's, uh, 
But yeah, my biggest learning is, is we are a student of life and it's, it's forever. And I know some people who are 70, 80. One of them, Esther, uh, is 70 years old and he's, he's so happy to be active. He says, I'm so happy to be with your company. And he's, 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 he, he, he brings you a kind of advice that nobody can bring you because when you're 70 years old, you, yeah. you have been through to so many things. And he would probably be unhappy to not do anything. Yeah, yeah for me, uh, impossible. Yeah. <laughs> So this one, I've been struggling pretty much all my entrepreneurship career with, with this one, which is you're building a business is very hard. You have big goals. You're struggling. Do you deserve the little pleasures or guilt, guilty yeah. pleasures or like all your friends? Or do I have to reach my goals? To allow, to allow myself to enjoy. So basically, I had that, and we talked about that also yesterday. You know, you're building the company, you're maybe not making money yet, so it's very difficult, but it's going to take a lot of time. It's a mm -hmm. process. But, and you work until very late. Often it's not even useful what you're doing, which is there. I need to be in the office. I need to be all doing all that stuff because I would feel bad not doing it because it's not working yet. I don't deserve to go for this uh, lunch or dinner with my friends. I don't deserve to go party because I haven't reached my goal. Mm. I, I so have that, of course. Yeah. So, how, so how should people building businesses think about that? Probably, it's probably not healthy. I Yet think, we all do it. I think it's healthy because if you stop to... And if, when I discover... Some, now I, I keep... What the, I try to keep my Saturday because before I was in, in, even in retail on Saturday was the time I can go and talk to mm. customers. So I, I start not to touch an email, to do my sport, to uh, just watch a movie, like things where I don't need my brain. And, and the day after, I'm super powerful. And I like so many ideas. So, but I feel like shit, honestly, when I say, oh, I didn't do that. And, uh, and so, but now I have done it I'm, I'm, because I, I saw I'm very productive the day after. So allow you some break, but I think until you haven't achieved your goal or uh, and I know my goal. Um, I don't think I will be super fulfilled. Uh, you have little moment of joy, I explain, but you, as if you are a real entrepreneur, very difficult. So hyper focus and uh, very the difficult. little I pleasures mean, or whatever is for another moment. I, I cannot. Well, the day you deserve it, you'll get, you'll, you'll allow but yourself. I, I'm surprised. I thought it was a woman thinks that you you uh, are absolutely uh, the same. Uh, you, you, absolutely, yeah. absolutely okay. terrible. Okay, I'm interesting. I'm <laughs> What's the best advice you've ever been given? It's, it's an impossible question. You have tons of advice in your... <laughs> no, one of the recent advice, because advice are different at different moments of your life. But, uh, and it was coming from someone really powerful in a big group, I won't quote, and he said, we are all fragile and we can always fail wherever you are. And I have it. So yeah, you, 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 you never arrive, never... Be chill. Uh, I think, yeah, you, 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 you are all very fragile. It's, uh, yeah, look at what happened a few years ago. Like the economy was booming. I mean, you know that in crypto money and from a day on another one, you were nothing and you yeah. were a millionaire a year ago. So, and, and yeah, today I'm, I'm very trained. So always be, okay, wh what could happen? Be ready. Uh, you know, it's, it's with the story of Kodak, you know, was number one yeah. in, and they didn't see so, my biggest advice, see the weak signal. Uh, don't have always the big things. Okay, China is opening, I go there, but what are the weak signals happening somewhere How can else? I get screwed? How will I get screwed yeah, in the future? But because the, but it's going to happen. Yeah, you just focus <laughs> on China. Or another, shit will happen. So, so I think the, the fragility of life and just yeah. itself, you know. Uh, yeah. It's also in business, it's also in family, it's also in friendship, it's also in business. So we are fragile uh, human beings and, uh, and be conscious about that. It helps you to go through the, the tough thing. What's something that you believe in that most people would not agree with? Uh, I think a lot of people still don't believe me when I say you need to work like a dog if you want to succeed. I, 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 I haven't met people who tell me... Uh, 
I, 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 it, it came, I'm, you know, I was lucky or whatever. Yeah, they would say, look, or work smart, you don't need to work that hard. Oh, super smart. Yeah. And, uh, I'm so sure. you need to work very hard and work very smart yeah, to be able I, to when actually I tell that to, to the young generation, but we, we know, they say, no, it's, 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 it's useless to work a lot. You need your balance of life. I mean, I'm talking for entrepreneurs. Huh? If you can't have a... A perfect balance is life. You no life. choose yeah, yeah, to be yeah. an entrepreneur. But I, I see in the <laughs> eyes of people, people don't believe me. I say, no, I That's can't. why entrepreneurship is not made for everyone. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, if there was a summary or takeaway that people should remember from today, what would it be? Entrepreneurship is not made for everyone. <laughs> uh, no, but so I have a dream. It's very important. And, yeah. uh, uh, but. Have the you you make your dream happening and nothing can make it for you. Uh, so and it's it, the learning is also the little step. Don't you need the big vision, but every little step is is very important. And don't want don't be too greedy and say I'm going to be big very easily. It, it takes a lot a lot of of, of small step. So um, I think everybody knows this advice, but in the entrepreneurship is very important. Yeah, and, what, what, mm-hmm. one way to formulate it is basically saying uh, micro speed, macro patience. So mm-hmm. every day you have to, in the micro, you have to work super hard, work super hard, work super hard. And and in the mi- in the macro, you need to stay patient because things will happen, but much slower than what you think, despite working super hard. Agree, agree. Yeah, but uh, really my advice is is uh, nobody can make your dream happen except you and and... And the team, of course, around you, but uh, it's it's in you. And I, I it's, it's an advice I discovered recently. Believe into it because you will attract the the right vibes. I I, I think it's, it's something a bit spiritual. The power of your mind. No, you know, absolutely. We talk a, a lot absolutely. about um, something we cannot qualify. Which, if you think positive, you attract positivity. If you think negative, absolutely. you. Uh, so I really believe in that, and it's hard because sometimes you're really down, and you say, okay, it's, 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 so. You, you, and picture yourself, picture yourself. Uh, sometimes, you know, I do my market visit and I enter in diptyque and I'm so jealous because the boutique is exactly what I want. And I say, one day, one person will enter in my boutique and they say, wow, the design of this boutique is amazing. So, and, and, and each time I, I, I do the, I, I look at my computer and say, one day I would be like you, you know, you have make fun of me. I'm fighting to be next to you, but. That's yeah. really my dream. And each time, you know, I feel a bit down because I see still the step I, I need to do to be at the level of a, a Dior, a Diptyque or whatever. But remember, uh, we talk about brand, we are very much like, like benefit, make up forever. They were uh, one day, three, they four were, million dollars me. Yeah, one Today, day. they are billion dollar brand. Yeah. So if the two sisters of benefit were able to do it, why not me, you know? But I'm, I'm sure. So I, I think project yourself, see yourself, and it, it really attracts uh, what you want. Uh, yeah, yeah. People, people under, underestimate the power of the mind. Oh, yeah. Everything starts in the mind. And then obviously, as you said, sometimes you're very down or you have all these people who don't believe in you or who even like, probably like, don't care. Like, like, like to watch you fail or whatever, but like you don't care. Because if you have this thing in your mind where you're like convinced, like you're basically you're almost irrationally convinced that you're able to make something happen, then it's going to happen sooner or later. And you know, we have a very famous sentence in French, you know, when the, the dog bark, you, you just pass your way because they are like under, yeah. because you know, sometimes you go and the dog bark at you and you're like afraid. No, people who are aggressive to you, just pass it and stay focused and, and align with yourself. For me, it's a very important advice and don't get, disturbed by people who are negative it's you need to clean that in your life it's, yeah. it's super important absolutely thank you so much for your time Joanna thank you for inviting me where can the audience find you and connect with you sorry where can the audience find you and connect with you uh, at Maison 21G <laughs> in my boutique in the store on no, Saturday yes, afternoon I, I mean uh, <laughs> Uh, and, and, and please connect with me uh, you can send me an email at Joanna at Maison 21G.com uh, if you have something interesting to, to share and you have questions, uh, I'm, I'm always uh, open uh, to exchange with other entrepreneurs. Uh, uh, so, yeah, you... you, you Even at 10 p.m.? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, awesome. And I have a team around me. So we are in, uh, in Singapore, in Korea, in China, in Middle East. So if you ask about me, and there is a lot of people, we come in, where is Joanna? <laughs> and they expect it. 
because there was so much on the field at the beginning and that should stay. Uh, but they leave a message and I will get your message. So, so my, my team is my extension, as I explained to you. So don't hesitate to leave a message in my boutique or on the website. Uh, I will get it. I still look at uh, every comment and everything. It's true. Mm. Awesome. Thank you everyone for listening and watching. Please smash the like button and give us your feedback and I'll see you all in the next episode. Thank you.